Let's talk theatre now and uh, Tony McCauley's best-selling book Paperboy is being brought to life on stage at the Lyric Theatre on the 26th of July it opens and we'll find out more. Tony joins us in at the studio. How are you sir? I'm very well Robin, thanks for inviting me along. That's alright, so it must be great to see your book finally taking on another life and uh, being put on stage. It is, it's very exciting and um, I, you know I've been up at the rehearsals this week you know observing the whole process and at times I have to admit, it's quite bizarre. You know, I'm sitting there watching people playing me, you know, uh, 40 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, this, this talented young uh, actor called Sam Gibson. He's playing Tony. So, you know, and then there's my family on the stage. So there's my granny and there's my mother, my father, my brothers. And then on other occasions, there's some fantastic scenes from the book uh, where uh, the youth club that my parents ran uh, they enter a float in the Lord Mayor's show as the Bay City Rollers and, and they've recreated the youth club wow. that was known as the Westy Disco. They've recreated this Westy Disco on stage and it's remarkably authentic. And then they've recreated the float in the Lord Mayor's show uh, uh, dressed up as the Bay City Rollers. So at times, I'm honestly, I just can't quite get my head around it. It feels like I've got into a TARDIS. I'm going <laughs> back in time. And of course, I'm a huge Doctor... If anyone's read my books, they know I'm a huge Doctor yeah. Who fan. So the idea of getting into a TARDIS and going back in time for me is very is, is really very thrilling thing to do. So it is, it's exciting and... Uh, but also quite unusual, quite strange to experience. Yeah. And of course also people who were around back in the 70s, it's going to be a bit of a nostalgia trip for them as well, coming to see the show, isn't it? Oh, well it is because, you know, there's going to be lots of parallel trousers and platform shoes. Um, th there'll be some, as, as well as the original score by Duke Special, there's going to be some tracks from, you know, the Bay City Rollers, wow. for example. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so there'll be a lot of nostalgia, even, you know, even some of the, um, you know, the confectionery that we were eating in the 1970s yeah. will be featured and uh, obviously the clothes the television programs and uh, you know that that whole era is going to uh, be brought to life and the fact that it's a youth production so it's you know it's teenagers today who will be on stage you know acting as teenagers in the 1970s it just makes it feel very real yeah and of course it's a big cast of kids as well so it must be a difficult job for the creative team and directors to kind of get all that together well it's yeah it's 35 young people um from all over the uk and ireland and you know they're from uh, they're from scotland they're from england uh, a big big group from northern ireland obviously a group from down south um and they they auditioned earlier in the year and they've come together and they have three weeks of intensive rehearsals to make this happen. So you've got the, the creative team are working hard on, 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 on everything. You know, we've got, um, uh, you know, we've, we've got Jen, the choreographer, she's working really hard on the dance. Uh, we've, we've got uh, Matt, the musical director, he's teaching the songs and then, you know, building on that as they get to, to perform the songs. And then the, the two directors, um, Stephen Dexter and Dean Johnson, you know, they're working on the scenes, they're working on the text, they're working on the drama. So there's so much happening all at once. It's very, very intensive. I mean, it's nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock yeah. at night. And then the creative team, then they're working to two o'clock in the morning to iron things out and revise things and get things right. And it must be good to have Duke Special on board as well because Peter's having lots of success with other theatrical shows and production that he's involved in as well, isn't he? Well, absolutely. I was, I was thrilled when I heard that, uh, that Duke Special was going to be writing the music because I've been a, a fan of his music for many years and I love some of the work that he's done, particularly with writers. Uh, I recently went to the Lyric Theatre to see a, a, you know, a, re a reading of Huckleberry Finn, which Duke Special and Andrew Doyle have have written based on the on the book, yeah. and um, and then last year they, you know they they had adapted Gulliver's Travels, and that was also in the Lyric Theatre this time last year for Youth Music Theatre UK, you know so um, you know so they have a really great track record with musicals, and um, and this is obviously a different story, a different era, and uh, in many ways great fun as well, and I love what they've done. I really I'm really excited to see it, you know up there on the stage. So for people who haven't read the book, what was life like in the 70s for you growing up? I was a happy wee boy. Now my head was full of Sweden that night, <laughs> so maybe that's why I was a happy wee boy. But I, I was just going around, going, going around uh, uh, my day-to-day -day life, you know, pretty much innocently and, and happily, you know, getting a paper round, wanting 
the lovely Sharon Burgess to be my girlfriend and wanting to have a dance with her at the Westie Disco, wanting to go and see the Bay City Rollers in concert in the Ulster Hall, uh, wanted to, you know, I wanted, imagined I was Doctor Who with the long scarf. Yes, yeah. Um, um, and, but at the same time, you know, in the background, you know, I had an awareness that all these terrible things were happening around me. I mean, I, I was living in the Balaga Martin Road at the top of the Shanko, and so I was very aware of all that was happening during the Troubles. And, and you saw some pretty horrendous stuff back then, didn't you? Well, well. I, I, I did, you know, exp you know exp experience some, like, me like, like many people growing up in Belfast, saw and experienced some horrific things. And, um, but for me, they, you know, as a child, I didn't know anything else. Like most of us who grew up at that period, you know, when you didn't remember before the Troubles, you just thought this was normal. And I suppose it's only in later life now that we realise that was not normal. Yes, You know, course, in terms yeah. of when I think of how, how my children have grown up in the past 20 years and compared to my childhood, it's a very, very different world. That, to thank God, it's a very different world that they've grown up in. And, um, but as a child, I suppose I was, I questioned a lot of things that I was hearing the adults saying. So I would have questioned the divisions. I would have questioned the violence or the, the, the idea of getting revenge, you know, to, you know, the, the tit for tat thing. I, I questioned that at the time. And that's very much part of my books, the sort of that innocence of childhood questioning what the adults are get, getting up to. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they've, they've reflected that beautifully actually in, in the musical. One of my favourite parts of, of Paperboy when I was writing it that, they, that they've, they've included in a beautiful way in the musical was the day of the peace rally in August 1976. It was the time of the peace people. Mm -hmm. And there was something like 25,000 women wow. from, from, from Belfast came together in Woodville Park near where I lived. Uh, basically, they marched together for peace. And what happened that day was um, the women from the Falls Road, they came across the gate, they came through the peace line and the women from the Shanko Road welcomed them with open arms and hugged them. And together, the women of the Falls Road, the women of the Shanko Road, they marched together for peace up the Shanko Road into Woodville Park. And I remember that day I was up the fields and I could hear the sound of them singing, Abide With Me and I could hear them cheering and I, I thought, I couldn't believe this. Yeah. I thought this was unbelievable. And my mother and most of her friends, they were all at the, you know, most of the women on our street had gone to this, uh, this peace rally. And I, I, I just thought, this is amazing. The troubles are going to be over, you know, very soon now yes, because yeah. this is, the, the women are coming together yeah. and they're demanding peace. So that was a very memorable day for me. And I, I, it saddens me a little bit, you know, when you sort of look, when you hear the history of the Troubles now, it tends all to be about the politicians and the yes, paramilitaries. Yeah. And that movement of the peace people in the mid-1970s, it was remarkable. And I suppose I'm delighted that in some way, you know, if people are reading my, my book and if people come to see this, uh, this uh, play, and, you know, if, 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 as we all hope and dream, it takes off and it goes further than, you know, this premiere production, that, you know, more people will see that part of the history of the Troubles actually was this remarkable movement for peace yeah. where women took to the streets in the 1970s. So what about the whole writing process of Paperboy? Was it years of hard work? Was it something that just kind of came together pretty quickly? I had never written anything creatively before. For many years I'd written um, business reports. I even enjoyed doing that, <laughs> believe it or not. I'd actually enjoyed writing business reports and things like that. Um, and I'd done some, you know, script, you know, scripted work for for the radio. You know, I do I do some, uh, I do things like Thought for the Day on Radio Ulster, for example. So I was used to write a little bit of creative writing, but I hadn't written creatively really since I was had been at school. So I went and did a creative writing course, and it was on that creative writing course that uh, one of the exercises I was giving one of the, one of the assignments was to um, to write a piece about. Uh, uh, stimulated by the word guitar. Right, okay. So I just started writing about the first thing came into my head about about guitar and it started to come back to me that when I was 12 I went for guitar lessons and the reason I went, I, the way I paid for the guitar lessons was because I had a paper round right. and but with my pay and my tips for my paper round I was able to get the guitar lessons, I was able to buy strings and plectrums and I was able to buy sheet music and the bomb damage sale from Crimble's <laughs> and I was able to buy the Mull of Kintar and try to imagine I was Paul McCartney who was left-handed guitarist yeah. like me. All right. Yeah and um, so at, at all, that all came back to me and I remembered a wee, a, an incident that happened one night. I was coming home from the paper round 
uh, and sorry, I was coming home from the guitar lesson and uh, it was a really stormy night and it was, the, it was the period when the British Army helicopter would have been flying over West Belfast and sometimes they'd have put the searchlight, you know, right down on you and they'd yes, lit up yeah. where you were standing in the street to see what you were doing and I don't know why I thought I was up to something, I was carrying something under my arm, but I was lit up by this searchlight coming down on, the, on my street just outside my front gate and in the wind the gate blew against my guitar and, and cracked it. My, my wee guitar that I got from Santa Claus <laughs> was cracked right down the middle and I was heartbroken. Yeah. So that's the story I wrote right. for the assignment. And my tutor said she really liked it. And she said, you should write more about that, about you know when you were a child and some of those stories. And, and so I did, I wrote a little bit more and I wrote a little bit more. And then after a while I thought, well, maybe I could write a book about that. Maybe I could write a book, just a memoir about those two years when I was a paper boy and I would frame it as my years as a paper boy and all the things that happened and how I saw the world and how I experienced the troubles as a, as a 12 to 14 year old yeah. boy. So that's really where, where it came from. I'd never really planned to be an author or to have a book published. Yeah. Uh, when, when, I, when I started writing it, then I did, I, want, I, I would have loved to have seen it published, but I wasn't sure is this, is this any good? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I had a bit of a block in my head that you know people like me from where I come from aren't don't really become authors. Right. Um, I had a bit of a block in my head around that, so I wasn't sure. I genuinely didn't think is this would this ever be published? Would it be good enough? If it was published, would anyone want to read it? Never in my wildest dreams did I think that would that would happen. So of course, after Paperboy, you did another book. After that, is there another one in the pipeline? I have four books now. Call it an Irish trilogy. <laughs> Four books now. So, but the first three are sort of a coming of age yeah. trilogy. So it's Paper Boy, and then in Bread Boy, which is the sequel to Paper Boy, I'm 15 years old. It's the era of Saturday Night Fever and Grease and punk rock, wow, yeah. and I have been headhunted because my customer service delivery skills are so renowned <laughs> that I was I've been headhunted to be the van boy right. on the Ormo Mini Shop. Oh wow! So I moved from delivering the papers every night to on a Saturday morning delivering the bread to the discerning customers of the Upper Shankle, <laughs> giving everyone their pan and their plane and their soda and potato. And uh, so that's that's that, the third, the second book. And then the third book, um, I leave Belfast for the first time uh, and go to university. It's called All Growed Up, okay. What Bread Boy Did at University. <laughs> and it tells how I sort of, for the first time in my life, have some of my views of the world shaken up by going to university yeah. and meeting people from exotic places I've never met people from before, like lovely girls called Heather from Portadown, <laughs> and um, and then and, and then I and, I and then I fall in love with a girl from Balaki, and uh, and then uh, she brings me to meet the, meet her parents in Balaki, and that's that turns out to be a kind of embarrassing experience, <laughs> but anyway, so that's the third book all grew up, and uh, so the, the first three are sort of coming of age trilogy. Um, my latest book is, it's, it's slightly different and it, it's more of a, a traditional memoir, if you like. It's written in my adult voice, right, where yes, the others yeah. are written in my childhood yeah. and teenage voices. Whereas the, 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 the latest book, is, it's called Little House on the Peace Line. And it tells the story of how in the uh, mid-1980s, when I was in my early 20s, I graduated from university, uh, uh, got, got married and uh, my wife Leslie and I went to live on the peace line in North Belfast and we did youth work and um, we, uh, Leslie was working with young loyalists in the Upper Shankle where I come from mm -hmm. and I was working with young republicans in the New Lodge where we were living and we lived right beside the peace wall and we were both Protestants and we lived on the nationalist side right. of the peace wall and uh, so that's, that's, the, um, that's the latest book and it tells the story of of that period period of time, it's a little bit darker in places just because of things that happened mm -hmm. in that in that in that period of time. Um, but there's also lighter mo the moments in that. For example, there's the, there's my uh, there's a chapter in it called Apprentice DJ where I write to Downtown Radio <laughs> and ask them to give me a radio show, and it tells you what happens. Yeah. You know when I go I go along to Downtown Radio and uh, kind of audition to be a presenter on Downtown, that sort of thing as well. Mm -hmm.